Welcome to Agile Roots 2010. Sponsored by Version 1, Rally Software, Virio, Emirsis, Agile Alliance, and Xmission Internet. A fresh approach to certification by Amid Sidki and Alistair Coburn. Okay, uh, certification is a hot topic. Who has been following any of the certification stuff floating around in the industry? One, two, bunch. Wow. Where are you guys following it from? Where are you like seeing stuff about certification? Well, I haven't looked recently. I was something that started about 20 years ago. Okay. Oh, uh, well, I've been watching it from the Agile Alliance perspective. Okay, and very good. I've been looking at some kind of, you know, lack of certification kinds of things. Okay, we've got one more. Yeah. <laughs> Good. How many okay. Agile Alliance people here? Your Agile Alliance, good. So the background on this, uh, this there's, there's, a, there's a couple of different uh, forks, uh, paths that come in here. Um, back around 2004, several of us, and I would put David Spence, Sanjeev Augustine, and me, were talking about this is pre uh, uh, PMBOI stuff. Uh, course curricula, plural for Agile, and so the way we were designing that was with sort of learning outcomes and levels and branches and specialty degrees and certificates and stuff like that. Uh, the PMDOI uh, came along, and then the, the APLN came along for those, that's Agile Project Leadership Network. So PMDOI is the Project Management Declaration of Interdependence, which is kind of a, 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 a postscript on the Agile Manifesto from the product management, project management, line management perspective, right? If you take out software and you take out, you know, some project, what do you get? Well, we wrote down some stuff and problems in on that. And then a group formed around that called the APL, an Agile Project Leadership Network. Uh, so we took the, the, that idea of course curriculum and stuff forward and uh, built up then, uh, had various uh, competing ideas on how to do it, but the one that, that leads forward into today was the idea that you'd have sort of a Boy Scout merit badge kind of a system. So you take courses, you collect merit badges, then you get you know first class, then you get second class, then you do an Eagle Scout project. That type of a thing uh, was the one that was proposed around 2005, seven, seven, maybe seven, seven. seven. Uh, and the APL had declined to use it uh, for various reasons that you know. They, um, and, and Agile Alliance at that time, I don't know where you guys are now, um, some of the people were pretty vocal, they didn't like any of the certification stuff, period, okay? Um, that, so the, the DSDM community in England picked it up and they've adopted, so APL and let it drop, so to speak, this had left it there. The DSDM people picked it up and they have it now as part of their certification sequence, whatever. Um, and then uh, Ahmed picked it up and said, I wanna go forward with this, and if I don't mind telling this about, uh, he works mostly in the Middle East. In the Middle East, if you don't have certificates and cert certifications and ladders and chains and stuff, you basically are a non-player. So he needs this in the Middle East. Came back to me, said, this is the kind of thing I'm thinking about. And I said, that's what we've been thinking about since you know, 2004, 2007. Makes sense. He added kind of the Eagle Scout project at the end, uh, which, is, which is very nice, a nice little tying the bow on it. Part of the other impetus of this is, frankly, people are sick of the certified Scrum Master certificate, right? Breathe for two days, get a certificate. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm a tough taskmaster in my class, you have to breathe for three days. If you stop breathing, like halfway through, you don't get the certificate. Right? So you have to finish the whole three days, still breathing, you get the certificate. Um, Can you sleep? Yeah, sleeping's okay. You just breathe, man. Just breathe. <laughs> That's tough. Uh, and I will take some, some valuable time to make fun of both the PMI and the Scrum Alliance. I'm by the way, a certified Scrum trainer, and I make money from handing out Scrum certificates, so full disclosure there. Uh, but the, the PMI has this fairly expensive, fairly rigorous, uh, lengthy, painful uh, thing you go through to get a project management professional certificate called PMP, which attests to nothing about how good you're going to be on a project. And what I like to say is the Agile people trump the PMI people because we can give you a workflow certificate in just two days instead of forcing all that long work. Okay, that hasn't been said. So the thing is, the trouble in a certain sense is that the certified Scrum Master certificate has taken on market value. So I don't think Scrum's not a bad thing. Uh, I wasn't going to teach it. CSM's not a bad thing. Things you learn in the Scrum classes are not bad things. But it's a small piece of the pie. Okay, so what we're going to be showing you today is a question of, and our desire is, 
to share what the pie is and let people collect their merit badges and get the first class, second class Eagle Scout stuff uh, as they go through that. Um, what is also interesting is I'm starting, to, as I travel internationally and I go to some com company, last most recent one was Valtech in France, and they're frustrated with the CSM certificate meaning anything in their two-day courses, certificates don't count for anything. They're getting ready to start creating those certificates. So I say to them, why fight over the certificate? Let's set up the learning outcomes. You say which of your courses cover which of the bits of competency or expertise. Let's level the playing field on the certificates and compete on the courses like you used to do. And that saves them a lot of trouble because they don't frankly want to create the certificates and fight against the idea and national <coughs> certificates and stuff. So that's the, that's the direction we're going is can we do that? Um, I gave the historical basis of where this came from. The shape of it is going to be basically competencies or learning objectives um, and then this sort of a, some kind of a big in-person test at the end uh, to, to get the Eagle Scout equivalent like that. Uh, the intention is to work with the, the PMI and the, uh, the IIDA, that's the business analysis group, um, and, and work out what would be inside of these job descriptions as learning outcomes or, or competencies and then let people uh, say these courses hit those competencies and, and, and work that way. That's the general direction that we're going. Does anyone want to take a question before I hand it over to Ahmed and we'll show more details, this, please? So I see the International Consortium for Agile. I, don't, I guess I don't know much about that, but is, is your certification that you're talking about is associated with that? Associated yeah, with so, right. So, so, so I see Agile, the National Consortium of Agile, is, a non, is our intention, right? Nonprofit, um, international, work with the group, set up the competencies, have a clearing house for the courses, right, registry, let people accumulate their stuff. Um, and I, if you, those of you guys know me and the way I test people, um, I ran him through my set of questions and he came out clean and I said, cool, I'm on board. So I'm on board. That's it. We haven't uh, created the, 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 um, the corporation yet, due diligence, funding, cost operations, pricing models, right? Uh, a lot of that. So this is what you're getting is more uh, sort of a, it's it's an intention of where we're going, and it's also where what we've got what the thinking is, right? Oh, we have one back there. Yeah, I have two questions. Uh, first question is: Are you aware of the Agile Developer Skill Project? I am. Okay. Not very, but I am. Okay. Um, and and I would say that since I'm not very, uh, uh, you'll see where it would enter into the discussion in here. When that often I guess that. Um, and my second question is um, uh, why the International Consortium for Agile versus the Agile Alliance? Agile Alliance uh, turned down this uh, issue back in 2007, so we just decided we were going to go for it. That's it. I have personally been working on this for six years, and we keep offering it to the, the different people, and they keep saying no, so fine, let's go. Yes, please. How do you get detached from the stigma that the Scrum certification has? Uh, very good question. And it, that there's there's uh, two things that are kind of big emotional topics right now. And one is the fact that the Scrum certificate is only um, you know two days of reading or three if you've got a, a guy like me. And the other is the fact that both the Agile Alliance and the APLN uh, declined this approach you know three and four years ago respectively. So this is a, the reason I'm standing up here instead of Ahmed is because this is a tough nut, right? And I think this thing comes out clean and fair. My view is the way you, you deal with the stigma around the CSM certificate is you, is you have a larger space and you let the market decide on the meaning of the different certificates. So you take CSM, you'll get like two merit badges out of 20, for example. And that, and that properly frames a CSM. The value of a CSM is, you know, two out of 20. So that's fine, you got two out of 20, cool, right? The merit badge concepts allows people to spend years growing their, their levels, right? Because, you know, it might take a two, three, five, so who cares? And as a person goes from job to job, right? They say, here's where I am on the journey. This is what I've accumulated so far, right? And I'm like that. So my view is, has long been that, that binary certifications are actually, there's a negative to them, but it's a downside, which is it doesn't allow 
Um, I, and I go back to Cisco. Cisco's got three levels of, I don't know much about Cisco, but my brother, my something. Well, son in law, brother in law, cousin, nephew, thing. One of them, probably. Right? <laughs> <Everybody. laughs> nephew. He's a nephew. I guess he's a nephew. Anyway, went to the Cisco, and the first one was easy, and the second one was pretty easy, and the third one kicked his butt, and he had to take it three times. You know, it was like hard, hard, hard. He's got Cisco level three certification. It means something, right? Mm -hmm. Right? Eagle Scout means something, right? So the way you get away from this, you know, PMPs, it's hard, but it's still binary. So if you have this gradation, uh, then, it, then it can attract some meaning. And it'll frame the CSMs. All the CSMs can have their two free merit badges, you know, straight away as far as I'm concerned. That kind of a thing. That's, that's why you paint the bigger picture, you make lots of, of steps. And the, and the idea is to let the market do the proper market kind of work. Course versus course and level versus level. That's where we're going. Sir. Um, so I've been on the Agile Line board and I don't recall this coming to the Agile Line board. It, it, I, think, I think, as I recall, and if you call it out names, um, that the people are not called names because I don't know enough of them at the time, that were so vehemently against the concept. If you recall, when we were on the Agile Line so you that it never even came in. We even left the topic in the door, which is another way of excluding it. Because if I think maybe the Agile Line position on certification is misinterpreted, although I think it's because of the people on the board Correct. who have been very strong <coughs> opposed to any certification. Correct. But the official position is that any certification that's out there should be difficult to obtain. That's their opinion. So, so and, I, and, and, and that's fine. Yeah. And, and here's the, this is the minefield of opinions that someone says like that. A certification should be different. I, I don't know that I agree with that. You could have a discussion. Yeah. Something, right? Mm -hmm. and, and, and this is the pattern that I accept. I buy into this, what you're about to see. We'll be interested to see either what the objections are, who says, by gummy, I'll you know, be in my grave before you come out with this, or who's on my board, or be very curious to see where we go. For us, this is very frightening, right? Because this is a heavy emotional topic. And so, so I guess the follow-up to that is if, if, if there's enough people in the Agile Alliance that say, oh, they, we like this, are you open to the Agile Alliance being a partner in this? Uh, yeah, we're open to editing the moment because it has not incorporated. My that's feeling, like, that's yeah, that's so good. that's, that's yeah. That's well, that's exactly good. that we're partnering with. Look, we're talking already in, in detail with the IIBA and the PMI. You know, it just makes sense. Yeah. The thing about if we don't need to reinvent the wheel, no one wants to. Yeah, well, and I'm not sure that that's that that's yeah. possible, right? I just want to, I just so, want to know so, what sort of openness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. right, right, right now it's all open. But I'll just tell you, I for one, I'm frustrated with trying to give it away and having it turned down. So I'm rolling. Uh, Todd also has seen the APLN competencies. Has anyone, did anyone see that early work from 2007? So you'll see a lot of overlap, because that was the starting base. Yeah. All right, with that, I'm going to let um, Ahmed show the So uh, like Alistair was saying, there is, there is, it's a step-by-step -step model. There, there were two things we were very conscious about while designing the, the whole certification program. One was looking for skills, the other was transparency. Okay? So to move along, there's basically three steps. This is the overall structure of the certification program. Three steps. First is the fundamentals phase, then the focus, then the certification phase. I'll go through each one of them in detail. So let's start with the fundamentals phase. So as Alistair was saying, this is built on learning objectives. So what IC Agile, the International Consortium for Agile, will do is provide the learning objectives. So people that want to finish this phase need to know one, two, three, four, five. We actually have 32 of them. I'll show you that in a minute. Then the instructors will prepare their courses based on these learning objectives. You can prepare whatever course you want based on these learning objectives. And at the same time, each instructor is asked to provide their own assessment method for the 32 learning objectives. And let me pause here for a second. So while we were looking at this, and again, the, the whole idea of certification, it's not just about certification, it's how it's done. I mean, hairdressers are certified, the doctors are certified, and there's scuba divers are certified. There's different kinds, but how is it done? So we looked at many different models starting from universities, driver license, uh, scuba diving, and we tried to take what makes sense from each of these to what we're trying to do. So 
one of the uh, one of the things is having the same person teaching provide the assessment, and that was a point of discussion. Right? Is that yes, no? Is it okay? Is it not? And so we looked at the university model, where the professor teaches. All right, so he gets a set of objectives from the department or whatever. They teach the course, and at the same time, they assess the students through whatever means they come up with, either through a project, through you know um, tests and, and whatever. So each instructor is is, is asked to provide their, how are they going to assess that the students in their class know these 32 learning objectives, or especially for the fundamentals phase, we've prepared an exam. So. If you don't want to go through the hassle of preparing that, especially for the fundamentals, here's something, build on it, tear it apart, add to it, subtract from it. But at the end of the day, you need to show, discuss with IC Agile, how are you going to assess that these people know these 32 learning objectives. So how we've done it, and Alistair was saying, that I work a lot in the Middle East, and uh, again, there are cultures that this certification thing is in their blood. And believe it or not, it's more than you think. Just cross the Atlantic and you'll find out. All right? And so one, we've actually piloted this for the past six months in different countries in the Middle East. And how we've been doing it is quite interesting. And let me just, it, I guess, highlight that very quickly. So the exam is handed out at the beginning of the class. So we start the class, the exam is handed out to everyone, and we tell them, solve it. You can imagine the reaction on their face. They have no idea they're coming to learn this. But the experience of going through the exam, they now know what we're looking for. In addition, they already have a printed copy of the learning objectives right beside them. So they know what, we, what they need to get out of the course. And here's how we are going to assess you. OK? So it's sort of like TBD. And it, it's nice to start to introduce that concept. At the end of the class, and this eliminates something I think very important, people focusing on the exam during the course. Is this going to be part of the exam? Is it not going to be? You've already seen it. That shouldn't be your concern. And so they go through the class, and at the end, the exam is solved in groups. And that group result, bless you, that group result is what they're assessed on, plus a group assessment. And let me explain this group assessment. Part of the learning objectives, and I'll just show them real quickly here. These are 32 learning objectives. I don't expect you to read them right now, okay? They're on the website, so you can go take a look at them. But some of them say demonstrate. Huh? Okay. <laughs> some of them say demonstrate. Some of them say explain. Explain and discuss, we can assess those through exams. That's not a big deal. But demonstrate, how do you assess demonstration through exam? So part of assessing these demonstrates is they have to do the exercise in groups and everyone in the group has to assess each other. So part of that group assessment is assessing their contribution to the group exam. And so these two inputs are taken, and again, this is one way of assessing. There may be others, okay? So you take the assessment of the students is based on the exam and the group activity. And so there's a little bit of applying it, assessing that you've actually applied it, and the knowledge. And remember, this is all in the fundamental space. What do they get after that? They get, if they pass both of these, they get a certificate of Agile Fundamentals. Took the class, I know what it means. And it also, having these learning objectives published, and they're open, they're transparent, even people that hire them know what is expected of these people. These are not masters of anything. This is what they know. They may know more, but that's up to them. That's not what we are saying they know. Okay? And they become an IC Agile associate, just a member of uh, the, uh, the, the consortium. So and we went through these. So this is the fundamental space. So this is just step one, basic Agile knowledge. And we go through mindset, how to plan, all those kind of things and the learning objectives. And at the end, if, if you want, I can bring them back and read them over. Next comes the focus phase. Okay? And with the focus phase, basically, we're looking at sort of an art open architecture where organizations or disciplines or roles that have learning objectives 
can just plug right in. All right? So we finished the prerequisites. Now, someone is a project manager. There's agile project management learning objectives. All right? There's agile development learning objectives. We need to know things about design and and and. There's coaching learning objectives. There's product management. There's testing. And so for each one of these focus tracks, a set of learning objectives, just like the one you saw with the, the fundamentals, are defined. And so let me zoom in here a little bit. So again, the instructors are asked to prepare courses based on these learning objectives. And here I added the word courses. Because something like the actual development track specifically, again, being a developer, I doubt you can finish all the learning objectives in one class. Either it be a five, six day boot camp, that's fine. So again, there's flexibility here. It's either a course or courses. All right? And so I may define one course that tackles 10 of the learning objectives and another course that tackles you know, the next 10. So I'll have one class on design patterns or simple design and so forth. So um, instructors prepare their course or courses around these learning objectives. And again, they're asked to create an assessment for these learning objectives. Now, again, it can be anything through uh, a project, through, again, I go to the extreme. If someone says, I will sit down and interview every one of my students, okay. Now, there's, there's a point here, again, I want to emphasize this whole separation of instructor and assessor. We preach trust in the Agile community. Right? And when you look at this separation, part of the reason behind it is can I trust you to actually give the course and at the same time assess objectively? So the, the, the criteria for picking instructors is very important, but once they're in, there is an assumed level of trust until breached. All right? but, so they are asked to prepare their own assessment. The course is conducted, people go through this assessment, and then they get a certificate, so I finished simple design, again, not through the consortium, but they get a certificate of completion of that course. What happens here when participants cover all the courses or finish all the learning objectives in a certain focus track, at that point, they get a certificate of Agile specialization. Now they know something more about Agile project management. And they become an IC Agile professional, okay? The next step, so we finished the fundamentals phase, we finished the focus phase. The next step is the actual certification phase. So along the way, they're getting, like Alistair was saying, these merit badges. They finish this, they gain that, and so forth. Now let's move to the certification phase. And remember, we want a skill-based certification. So part of what we were building on here is the hiring model. When you hire someone in your organization, all right? That's something you're really looking for. You want someone you trust, someone that's competent. So we looked at that kind of model. So you apply for the, um, you apply for the certification phase through an application. And the application highlights your experience around this particular focus track that you're going through. And there may be, and I'm saying maybe because it differs from track to track, there may be certain prerequisites to even apply for the certification phase. Meaning, uh, the Agile project management track may have requirements that you've applied this for one year. All right? The Agile testing track may not have that. I'm just giving examples. These haven't been decided yet. All right? But there may be prerequisites. So this application, it looks for experience. It looks that you've fulfilled these prerequisites. Now, each applicant is given a phone interview just like the hiring process. Let's talk to real people here. And with experts on the other side of the, 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 the phone interview, they will get a sense, does this person know what they're talking about or not? Okay? And so the phone interview is to, to look through the, the application, discuss it with them, so the application isn't just submitted and rejected without any kind of conversation, or you just get feedback in the email. No, there's, there's a discussion. So tell me how if you do it. So who did you take the courses with? What was most interesting? It's an interview, right? And this will really bring out a lot of things. If they pass the interview, then the next step is what we call a hands-on immersion. Hands-on immersion, this is the interesting part, where 
we've been talking to, uh, or the idea is to either create own, our own conferences or tag along to conferences like the Agile Alliance Conference, SQE Conference, and basically have, uh, you guys have been to the Agile Alliance Conference? Raise your hands. Okay. You guys heard of programming with the stars? Mm -hmm. Okay. So it's sort of like that where, let's say we have a developer coming out from the development track, a tester, a, a coach, and they create a team, okay? And this team will be on a stage in a room, whatever. But they actually apply, all right, with a real customer there, they take a slice of the problem and they actually develop it. Now, sitting in front of them are assessors. So people that will look, just like Dancing with the Stars and so forth, they will look at them and the, the idea is if, if an expert is sitting there, it will take probably 10, 15 minutes, and they will know if the person in front of them knows what they're doing or not, right? It's the blink concept. You'll get a sense. But the idea, the idea is to leave them for four hours. The assessors will go around maybe looking at different teams, but for four hours, these people are actually developing. During this conference, the, the idea also is to have people that want to see an agile team in action this is right there in front of them. They can go, they can see, they can see how people are applying this in real life, and it's a very transparent process. Everyone knows who's up next, who's being tested, who's being observed, and so before we can say someone's certified, if anyone wants the challenge, come and take a look at them. All right? And so with the hands-on assessment, they are assessed for the application of their skills during this phase, and at the end, if they pass that, they receive a certificate. Yes? The hands-on immersion, I take it, is intended to be as public and transparent as possible? Yes, sir. Thank you. And that's part of it. So not, no one will suddenly be a certified Agile project manager, and no one has heard of it. If you want, here they are. They're going to be doing their thing. Come, take a look at them, and so forth. Are you intending that the hands-on, if you have multiple applicants at any given time, would you be wanting individual separate immersions? Are you thinking so the idea, some of the idea is you would, so like I was saying, this is probably an additional day to the conference and it's an mm -hmm. extension, mm -hmm. where you would go and it's all stages of programming with the stars, it's not one. Right. So there's multiple ones because of the, the number of people that will be applying. And we're also looking at sort of adding this because the idea is for it to be international with XP days in different countries, different Agile conferences. So we want to provide that, that I guess, venue for people to really step up, perform, and show what they can do. So you might have, say, four developers, four, four people who are looking specifically from the development focus working together in a single session. Yeah. All four of them. Yeah, yeah definitely. Thank you. And so they get an, a certificate of Agile expertise and become a, a, an IC Agile expert. Sort of, if you want to look at the overall picture, after I just, so you have the fundamentals of Agile, you finish that, you become an Agile associate, you have the focus tracks, and as I was saying in the focus tracks, and Alistair talked about this, the learning objectives can be, we can develop them as IC Agile or in association with PMI, IIDA, Again, we don't want to reinvent the wheel. If someone wants to step up and help, great. And so coaching, uh, we talked initially to SEI about Agile CMI. Then we have the certification phase, the phone interview, the hands-on immersion, and then the, the last step, which is becoming the IC Agile expert. Here's another way of looking at all these pictures are on the website, so and we can hand out the, so they take the fundamentals. Again, we've been through all this. Oh, the, just the last designation here, an IC Agile Fellow, okay? So once the person has become an expert, remember, this is, really, I don't want to call it volunteer-based, but there's, there's a lot of contribution from the community. Uh, with the phone interviews, with all this, it, it's an ecosystem because at the end of the day, if we don't take care of the, the, the whole certification, then we are going to be the ones that are harmed at the end. So, by community, community contribution, helping out, being part of the, the assessor panel at the conferences and so forth, um, and peer nomination, they become an ICF fellow. 
So we talked about the, the, the IC Agile Fellow track, and I'm sure a lot of you are thinking, so what about the instructor track? How do people become instructors? And so the, the idea is this. Again, submit an application. You want to become an instructor. And while we were doing the instructor track, a couple of thoughts came to mind. We don't want it to be a just an easy process, apply, you're in. And at the same time, remember, there are a lot of people, people doing amazing Agile stuff out there that are probably better than me, better than others, that don't have any designations. They're not a CSM, a CS, anything, all right? But they know, they know what they're doing. So the idea was submit an application, and then the application is reviewed by a set of experts and fellows. And then each applicant will again go through the phone interview. So again, I'm repeating, as you can see, there's a lot of community contribution here. Mm -hmm. All right? But again, it doesn't have to, it's not for free. There's honorariums, plans into the idea, and so forth. But the idea is they will talk to people, people will assess them, people will, does this person, how many years of experience? And that interview will vet out a lot of things. So either through the phone interview, we say, okay, maybe you need some mentoring, you need to, to practice a little more, here's a, a couple of people you need to talk to in your locality, and so forth. If the phone interview goes fine, remember, we have these venues, which are the, the conferences. So the applicant is scheduled for a face-to-face -face interview at the next conference, whatever that next conference will be. All right? And then they're required to present a topic of their choice to the people. And so again, it's by application. You want to be an instructor, get up there. There will be a couple of people from the IC Agile side to assess your teaching skills, your knowledge, how you handle questions. And at the same time, there's regular attendees that will give feedback. Based on both of these feedbacks, the instructor will be evaluated on both of these feedbacks and the face-to-face -face interview. They either pass, and when they pass, they become a, an authorized instructor for the fundamentals of Agile track. And then there may be separate interviews for if they want to be a development uh, instructor. Mm -hmm. As you can imagine, that, that's a whole set of questions and, and applications and so forth. So this is the basic idea behind the certification program. Um, questions? Yes? I have a lot of questions. That's why we're here. That's why we finished early. And I'm going to address these at both you and Alistair. Um, Come on down. I was enjoying this. Uh, so, <laughs> let's see. I'll, I'll ask these one at a time and let other people jump in in between. Uh, so first, uh, what you're going to do here if you're successful is create a power structure. And um, how do you prevent that power structure from uh, stifling evolution and innovation within the Agile space? Because you're going to establish learning objectives and, and really say, this is what Agile is and this is what it's not. How is that going to allow Agile to continue to evolve? Nice question. Um, the first answer is just that I'm so allergic to some of those things that you know, while he was talking about the develop track and the same professional, the developer agile skills thing and so on, um, I get I get kind of nervous when someone says that you must do an XP practice in particular or you are not doing agile. That kind of thinking scares me, so I'm almost like the first ombudsman on that. Mm -hmm. um, at least at the fundamentals track. For instance, I think the most interesting one was had we done this uh, three years ago, um, there would have been about time boxing iterations in Sprint since the arrival of Kanban. We've had to uh, reword that one to take it on. Yeah. So those things will, you know, the, that's where if you have the, the experts and the fellows there, these are the people who are up on the community, uh, will catch the drift. And will Let me add to there. that. The, the learning objectives need to evolve. Anything. I mean, if, if anything becomes stagnant, it stops there. The evolution stops. But the idea is the learning objectives will capture now, and then they will continue to evolve as the industry evolves. So, okay, well, that's one question, and we've got two other hands up. You yeah, I want to clarify that question. Yeah, please. Go for it. Okay, go okay. for it. That's a good question. Go for it. Um, so, the concern I have, I mean, this is the best developed certification tool I've ever seen, and I think attention to it. So, kudos for that. Um, so I guess the, what I want to know is, do you have you 
created mechanisms for that evolution? And have you thought about the human nature of protecting what you've already got? Those people who already, you know, can I, can I say for, for myself, I guess uh, that's a great point. I personally hadn't thought about it, but uh, we'll just take that on. Uh, right. Part of the idea of having, as I say, the experts and the fellows in there, um, being leaders you know, up on the field, that will cause a natural growth. Uh, power structure is inevitable. You know, I mean, just as Todd uh, brought up, Agile Alliance was nothing. And then now it's a power center. Scrum Alliance was nothing. It's a power center. PMI was nothing. It's a power center. The presence, the arrival of a power center is scary to people, right? And uh, people who have power and people who aren't in power are scared of more power centers showing up. Um, so I, I think that's very good. We have not discussed explicit mechanisms for evolution. Uh, that's a really great thing. But for, for Ahmed or anybody to say, of course, it'll evolve. Um, it's kind of vacuous if you don't have the mechanism. And, and I was thinking of the experts and the, the, the fellows naturally doing that. Um, but you're right, so that's a great point about introducing a mechanism. We've got two more questions, Andrew. Well, just to be fair, I'm, I'm content to hear every question. I thought James you hand was up. Were you just no, I do. You? I, have, I have a couple questions. But if James has questions, I'm, I'm definitely interested in anything <coughs> to ask you. Yeah, but James could keep us here past wine and beer time. <laughs> 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 I think that might, be, that, might be, that might be the most beneficial approach to this. So, so we have. Well, except you missed it. Todd also could keep us here past wine and beer time. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I have a couple of other questions, but I'll start with this one. When we're talking about the evolution, and you you, you set up a power structure, and you kind of have labels to different levels. Yeah. Uh, how do you check? the people who are established in the power structure and make sure that they <coughs> actually add value to this ecosystem and, and actually yeah, have the checks, knowledge the checkers. That it's up to checks the checkers. Now, now part of the power structure thing, the way we're getting around that is, is that we're going to people like I say, like Valtech, go to Rational, go to IAB, PMI, developer set, right? And check the learning objectives. So the thing is that we, we want alignment on is that these would that these learning objectives are meaningful. So that's the first way. It's not we sit in a room, make it up, and do it. So it's the, that double checking piece. So that's to get an initial set in place. The after that, uh, very interesting, and, and I love it. You know, we're all paranoid. You guys are even more paranoid than me. But that's, but that's good. That's good. So who checks the checkers? I, I don't have more on that. Are you okay to let Todd get the next question in? Or? I know where you live. So, uh, <laughs> 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 Thank you. Sorry. It sounds like one year. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I guess uh, I would just echo uh, Jim's comment on, on the evolution and how do we keep Agile Agile. And I guess the other element I'd, I'd be curious about, um, and because I think that's what has been the biggest concern that, that my exposure to certification, that every time it's come up, it's like, it's been, well, can you develop an Agile certification program which is in self Agile? And so that was one of the acceptance tests that I had in looking at what could I accept if there's something like that. I'm curious, do you have, have you come up with acceptance tests of what works for this program and user stories that you, who are your stakeholders and user stories that, that you're trying to serve? The, the kinds of, of people that we've dealt with first, and oh, first of all, I want to say that uh, I, as you guys know, I'm on record, I think we're past Agile, right? So Agile is a word that amongst us, we're kind of <coughs> past it. We're in the, when I look at this certification, you could strip out the word Agile, it would make me, in a sense, happier. Effective, it's software development, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so effective project management, effective uh, effective testing, right? All of that stuff. And how do we so when you say, how do we keep this Agile, I'm thinking, I don't even want it to be Agile, I want to be Jet. This is software development people, not just Agile. So stuff. how do we keep effective software development effective? Right, right, that's very good. And that's got the, I'll get back, I'll get, mm -hmm. and so I guess it is thing about the, the, the motion. What was the other part of your question I want to get at, which is, which was, what was the second? About user stories and acceptance tests. Yeah, so the, 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 the driving <laughs> stakeholders, so the thing that's interesting is, uh, for me, is I don't do any work in the Middle East, right? Um, he's got a fire under him because he's got clients who are you know, burning for this sort of stuff. I have clients who are hungry for it but not burning. Um, so the certain stakeholders are all of his constituency, the companies in the Middle East who are trying to get their people trained. I have clients around the world. They come to me and say, here's, a, here's one of the stakeholders, and this is the same as it was in 2007. Alistair, we've got 2,000 uh, project managers who like this agile stuff. What's the curriculum for what they go learn? Don't tell me what course to send them to. What should we get them to learn? 
right? So there are quite a lot of people who, companies, who are asking that question, so there's a stakeholder in there. Um, and then you take the opposite side, you get the, the future employee, uh, the employee who says, if I want to get good jobs in this area and declare that I'm good at it, they don't give me a course, what's the curriculum? So it's all curriculum based. So those are the stakeholders we've got at the moment. Do you have any more stakeholders that you're looking at? No, I mean, that covers a, a, a huge group right there. Yeah. Okay. Nate. Okay. Three, years, three years ago, I earned the... Microsoft yeah, I'll stop. That was very good. I missed that. The trainers. Of, and there's two categories of trainers. Uh, there's the individual trainer like me and the big companies like Rational, Valtech, and so on. And so trying to come up with... And that's where the financing model, you know, cost comes in. Is, 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 that being looked at uh, something that works for an individual trainer, what is it that works for a big uh, training and education company? Yeah, thank you for bringing that up. That was important. Nate. A dozen years ago, I got Microsoft Eagle Scout, the MCSD, and I haven't touched it since. How do you prevent atrophy in the professional and expert? Uh, so, go ahead. Yeah, so we the, the mechanisms we have in place is for the, especially the professional, there's a, a renewal every three years. All right, so again, that can be discussed if it needs to be one year, depending on the speed of the industry. And the renewal is through an interview, a phone interview, either face-to-face. -face Again, having that venue where, where people can meet face-to-face -face adds a lot of value because we can do a lot there. Right? So either a phone interview, face-to-face -face interview, but it has to be talking to a human being, not just a test or not. And there's a, another thing, we, we, we're, down, we're now in areas where we haven't uh, explored a huge amount, but well, I'm a big fan of date stamping, the date that you get something. So if someone said CSM 2002, you know, they kind of haven't, or what if they said Agile Search 2002, maybe they haven't kept up on stuff. So I, I, these are kinds of mechanisms we haven't gone into. Um, we have discussed that a bit, but haven't so Yes, please. Yeah, I'm seeing in this and in previous slides mechanisms that I've noticed in a couple of different organizations I've been in, and I don't know whether you want to uh, to talk offline later about some of the some of the details. Can you just name some of the organizations? Toastmasters. Yeah. Institute for Certification of Computing Professionals. Those are the two big ones that. Okay. That and I'm is there using. similar or different to this? Uh, similar in several ways for the certification in particular, Toastmasters, for the accredited speaker mm -hmm. series, for the ICCA, they have the Certified Computing Professional, we're doing it every few years as a continuing Are education. You, is that Canadian? No. Okay. That's, uh, that was American. That came from about 20 years ago back when states and were And are there any salient or really interesting differences that we, we might want to be alert to on either the Toastmasters or the ICCA? Or challenges in the printing presentation. If you think of them, tell us later. Yeah, 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 much, oh, much, more, much more in details, and I'm not sure that I'm not sure how they would they would deal with the, the sort of the details. But it fits in and validates what you've been thinking here. So, out of all this, I see nothing where you're off track, as far as I can tell. And and later you can give us context, because I wouldn't mind rechecking. How, like, how does a Toastmasters group feel about what they've got and how does the ICC how are they feel, over how they feel about what they've got now, having practiced it? Yep. Thank okay. you. Back to anybody else who has not asked a question yet. Love to see fresh hands. Yes, please. <laughs> I was wondering why you chose to do the re I mean, recertification every three years as opposed to what they do um, with certified public accountants, which is peer review, okay, and they do CPE, continued professional education. How did they do a peer review? Do you know? I, I, I can ask my CPA because he'll know. And um, I'm hoping you'll remember some of these yeah. great. Well, so not locked down, open to suggestion. Exactly. If it's a better idea, uh, cool. Right. If there's pre-validated models for this that we can step into. Um, you know, the big thing is, as I said, we're trying to get, paint the big picture to get the individual certs that are out there in place, have it multi-stage, you know, blah, blah, blah even the playing field song, um, but so much of this is new for us. If we can borrow from other groups, it's just, just safer, better. Anybody else who's not asked, I, mean, I know Jim, look, Jim, I know, I and mean, you'll get your, some more turn, but people who haven't asked a question like the round robin, this place. So you've talked about the focus track phase and the concept of, you know, like in the fundamentals, people creating their own courses to address those learning objectives. Yeah. Um, does the focus track allow for other people to create their own merit badges? 
that are still uh, learning objective centered may be approved or, you know, in partnership. It, it hasn't crossed my mind. Has that crossed your mind yet? No. I, I don't see an objection to it. Because I, I, I mean, you, you need to, to have. You know, if someone says, like, we really think this is very, very, very important, and it's not in your list, I, I don't see an objection with having a, you know, sort of a plug-in add-on. Kind of the, the key is, like I said, open, additive, uh, and just transparent, right, to, to get the job done. Uh, okay, back to you, Jim. All right. Um, so, these things never work out the way we want to do So, but maybe it'll work out better. Who knows? Um, I, I assume we're going to get smacked from someplace we can't even see. Yeah, so that's my question, is in five years or however many, much time, but some time in the future, mm -hmm. substantial enough time to actually see results from this, mm -hmm. uh, how will you evaluate whether or not this is working and what mechanisms do you have for pulling the plug if it's actually being harmful? The, um, so I'm a big cynic when it comes to human nature. Mm -hmm. uh, and let's say that I really disagree with it. And uh, what I would then do is, of course, quit. And all the people who like it will, of course, not quit. And then I'll go out and say, I quit and I don't like it. And they'll say, stuff you and keep going. <laughs> so that's <laughs> kind of. There are structures you don't like. Well, I, you know, I mean. You try your best to keep it, but I mean. For those of you who know me, you know, you must know I'm terrified by the entire you know, concept of it. I'm not, I'm not as, you know, Ken Schrader started two entire power centers all by himself. Right, and he's going to a third. And, and only for him, he's built that way. I'm not. This is like scaring the. the, the and one down. other thing. But but sure. but, we're hurting badly without it. We're hurting really badly without it. Uh, as, as someone here said, this is the best plan that I've seen. So that was actually me. Not all the time. That's how bad. It's how nervous I am. Uh, so so may I make a suggestion, which is that you incorporate a kill switch. Nice. Uh, um, I'm assuming that your stuff's written down, which means that you can forward those to us. I will email. Them. I suspect you will. And in fact, in fact, you could blog about it, and then people could comment on your blog, and you can see the comments on the blogs and the evolution there. So that, that wouldn't bother us either. Uh, the thing that's that's really pleased me. Note that I'm the add-on to Ahmed, right? Um, in a sense, we did some foundational work, the learning outcomes back in 2004, 5, 6, 7, right? <coughs> But he picked it up and took it the next step. He came back to me, and I, I'm, I'm signed on for the ride. And the thing, one of the things that impresses me continually about him is open, transparent, right? Uh, we're telling you everything we know. We're going to publish the learning objectives. You know, we'll publish the, the tracks. Well, uh, everything is open. The only way that we can that, that feel safe about how we're doing this is to be open about that stuff. And so, if you blog about it, that's more openness, and we'll see. Is the bank account open? What? Is the bank account The bank account is open. Yeah, we have deposit slips are out on the tables. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Right. Uh, yeah, but that's the way, you know, because if we have a problem around some of this, the only way that we can see to do it is to get as much openness as we can. And, and one other thing, this has evolved since the pilot. I mean, so the fact that we've been trying this out for six months, a lot of things have changed already. So. Well, I think we'll, I think we'll find it much harder to change once two of your yeah, yeah, yeah. We no, point well taken. Let's get the next person. We had uh, Kevin. No, people haven't spoken yet. Sorry? No, there was somebody else. Pardon Ali, did you have a. No? No. Go ahead. Um, so I'm assuming one of the reasons we're hurting is because of the existing certifications out there. Correct. What other reasons are we really hurting? So here's the thing, without any certifications, uh, I go to some of my bigger clients, and then with the problem, I said, we've got a thousand project managers, love this agile stuff. What do we go send them to? Right? Don't tell me a company, don't tell me a course. Why do I have more? I've been begging for an answer, but that was the thing that drove me at the time of the APL. And looking, that was what was driving me at the time was I had clients who said, give me a learning structure. Right? But that's, that's for me uh, the burning platform thing. That's the, the, the burning thing. He's just, you can't function in his, in his venues without it. So, so those are the two hot. hot so is this specific to, to certain clients and certain cultures? Well, I, well I, 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 you've got, the, you've got the, the, the whole thing around the CSM. You know, which is which is people around the world uh, are just getting mad. Oh, I was going to say, in addition, so I, I I trained here too. Some of my clients here, first thing they ask, is there a certificate after this training course? Is it part of the certification program? All right. So it's trust me, the culture is not just overseas. Uh, there's there's that culture also in corporate America a lot. The and and the question is, uh, and, and I guess. What the Scrum certification of the Scrum Alliance did was it provided one alternative, I think, that really pushed 
um, just agile forward in, in, in um, spreading it. Now, the quality of it is, is a different discussion to talk about, but it gave the mechanisms for organizations and enterprises to say, oh, okay, get me five of these certified things, whatever they are, because there is something out there. If there isn't, what alternative do people have? They learn by themselves. That's, that, I would love that, but it's reality is, is well, a different discussion. The reality I hear when you talk about this, can we just have a discussion for now? Yeah, go oh, yeah. Have a discussion. So, so the reality when you talk about the pain you just mentioned, the pain is you guys can't sell, right? I know. Mm -hmm. I'm just, I'm nope. just throwing it out there. Nope. Why? Oh, I, listen to my words. I go to a client. They say, Alistair, what do we have our thousand PMs learn? Do not tell us a course. Do not tell us a company. What should they learn? Okay. When they start sending the people through, how do they know they've gone through it? So that is a pain. It's not me. But I got nothing to sell. Okay. I mean, I've been on the other side of this where where a community is begging for a certification, and it's it's almost always this. And I think it's been alluded to, like these command and control structures, they insist on having the rank or the merit badge at the end of the, of the process. I, I, I'm a cynic on human nature. I see. I think that is a given. Right? What he said, give me five of them certain things. Right? We know that's going to happen. Go ahead. Well, I'm seeing, I'm coming from a slightly different take on it, and I'm seeing folks that are going for certificates or the equivalent as a self-actualization, a validation of their own, own ongoing growth and skills that they know that they will apply, whether that's, or not there's an actual cool. recognition. That's cool, that's such a minority, you know, and, and I Maybe I'm in the wrong spot, but to no, me it's a no, majority. They're, they're, they're that's, all, that's definitely not a majority. No. Okay. And, and we'll get just to just a my, second here. Uh, we've got oh. these stacked up, oh, but just one, one thing about that. Um, I forgot. The, um, okay. Hang on. And, and, and let me add to, to what you're saying. So and when you look at reality, we have one of two options. Either to say, no, nope, we're not going to do this. And there are still people that are giving certifications that are different quality. So so, the, so let's talk frankly. Let me, let me say one thing. Go, go on, please. Point. So there's basically a power vacuum that's being created by the disintegration uh, of the scrum, like, not the speak. Uh, actually, the opposite is true. There is not a power vacuum yeah. there. There's actually a power, power monopoly. monopoly. And I would say yeah. a knowledge vacuum. There is a knowledge vacuum, but I, I think if you, if you don't think there's a scrum backlash. But this is a scrum backlash that's different than the previous for G's. Choose this for yes. one. The, the, the vacuum time. is forming. There's not a vacuum. The scrum line still has power. There's still quite a bit of um, scrum certification yes. Yes. validation. There's a vacuum without but, certification. But look at this. I mean, okay, just wait. The, 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 they just split yeah. like an amoeba. Okay? I know. Like, let this be. Open, right? We're going to talk. I know that, that's fine. So, tell me I want that, that's, that's, that's a dysfunctional. Work. That was a dysfunctional organism, right? On, on whatever level, and that that power structure is not as strong as it was. Okay, keep right? going. And that Where is creating are. that is creating an opportunity yep. for someone. Yeah. Maybe you. Yeah. Maybe someone else to yep. create a certification yep. that people will value as the agile certification. Yep. Which, what Scrum has been. Yeah. For the last however long. Yeah. Yes and no. Okay. So so yes, except it's uh, uh, there are actually a large number of people showing up for cert certificates. No, absolutely. Right. So, so the power vacuum is not there because the Scrum Alliance and the CSM still has the power. However, there is a vacuum as you identified, and we're seeing happening. Absolutely. Right, and right now, they're all competing small certifications. Uh, things and we're trying to make a big picture and get uh, these things to line up in a particular way. And, and even and just putting the whole bathroom thing aside, quality. I mean, that's just a whole different discussion by itself. That that the quality of, of people that are certified today, uh, we need to step this up and give them a path to even awesome. Just, uh, awesome. create a journey. So, so let me add to that. And, go ahead, go ahead. And, oh, Daniel's backed up and he has a okay, smoke. Sorry, so, okay. Daniel. Um, there's obviously a need here. I'm a big fan of the Austrian School of Economics. If there's a need, the market's going to support, support that, and it will eventually survive. If, it, if the need goes away or whatever, then it's going to collapse and go away. So as long as there's that need, this will be successful and continue on. And, and a disclaimer here, I don't think any one of us claims this is perfection by any means. No, no, I know. But it's, it's a step that. forward. No, I, I hear that. 
Okay, the more be free. Probably. So DSDMA turn had taken the APLN stuff and created an agile project leader curriculum program thingy. Right. Right. Which I have not looked at. Have you looked at it? Right. Not that much. Okay. Um, okay. And to my to my knowledge, it hasn't been particularly successful. No. I'm curious as to why you didn't go back and look at it. Why why not? Everything's the bracket. Not look at it. Just time. Just time. Just time. It's just just bracket. No, we will. This is part of basic due diligence. Call them up. Say same questions. What do you have in it? Because it's not. It's not that different. Probably the, the biggest thing that's different is the the hands-on immersion piece, yes. which sounds intriguing, but also sounds expensive. So right. I'm, just, I'm curious, if you, right. have, have you really thought that through in terms of how how you? Do uh, we've done did that. I don't have the numbers in my head, but yeah. And and yes, it might be expensive. But the idea is, if you had uh, let's say uh, uh, 16 or 20 people. Going through, they split the cost of the experts who show up and do the games, the movie assessing. And a lot of, uh, a lot of other, I mean, if you, if you get a little bit creative about it, you could charge admission for the visitors. You know, come come watch Agile People program, you know, 20 bucks for the day or something. Put them in a cage. Somebody hasn't spoken before, please, Jen. So uh, the DSDM, uh, the that he was talking about, that's the one it's really what we do at Backcountry. Mm -hmm. That's what Michael Pat pushes it. And I, I want to clarify, it's, it's not successful in the U.S. There's very successful. No, 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 no. DSDM is one thing. We're talking about the certification that was right. added. So Sure, and I think the certification as well is, is being adopted over there. Yeah. Um, and I've looked through it a bit, and I, I find it interesting. Um, it might be worth just looking at just to see if we there will. are aspects that you might want. We will. It's part of the due diligence. It's, you know... Our target timeline, by the way, is uh, to do a proper announcement at Agile Conference middle of August, so we've got two months. Great. Um, and this hurdles, you know, financial, legal, and, and this kind of due diligence, reaching out, checking with the people and so on. And please, more feedback, I mean, even after, because I know our time is almost up, so. Uh, Ali also hasn't spoken. Well, I just wanted to add that, I mean, the way you guys present this, I see quality in it. I have, I don't know if anybody here took Toastmaster certification. Is that it's a hands-on. You get to group of people. They have the same interest, and they, they try to learn something every day. I took the, the Scrum Master and Product Owner certification. Two days, two days. I paid twenty-five hundred dollars. That came out. I did not learn as much. So if quality adds to this, I see it. It's going to get successful. Okay, I'll let um, you and um, uh, Jim take it out as to which one of you gets the next turn. Okay. I will defer. I will defer. Oh wait, uh -huh. Nate. We have a new voice, Nate. Uh, with all these merit badges, am I going to get a nice sash that I can put those on? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so a t-shirt. A hat. A hat. <laughs> it'll, be, it'll be in the store, different qualities of cloth, you know, different Short, sizes, Short. different prices. Talking yeah. to Disney right now. Jerry, did you have a problem? <laughs> so, so, if I get a laughter, I'm going to get No one's going to get a You presented uh, a false dichotomy, I think, which is that either we do this or they do it. Um, but I think there's a third option, which is that it is possible for us to debunk the idea of certifications as a valid approach entirely. And right now, if you Google as a certification, you'll find my article on trying to do that as a good hit. So it is possible. So I offer, <laughs> I offer that we follow uh, all of those paths at the same time. So I encourage you to debunk certification at the same time we're building it up. And either you will convince the various other people. Like, like if you were to totally convince our clientele to go away, I actually think that it wouldn't bother us a whole lot, right? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> if you don't convince them to go away, then we've got this model on there. So I actually don't want to dissuade you from that. But I think two that's minute, a huge mission. Two because minute, that's culture. awesome, so Andrew. So, so right now I'm the president of the Downtowners Toastmasters Club. Here's are you serious? You yes. are? Yes. Oh, yeah. oh, well, we don't have that. And if we talk about the, uh, <laughs> it, if we talk about the quality, and the, and so there's a couple things that came up that, that he brought up originally, originally with Toastmasters. You have this notion of a community of practice, that everyone's meeting, everyone's giving speeches, and you go through and you deliver this, this format of speeches. The thing that bothers me about what we're seeing right now a little bit is this notion of interviews as the gating factor. Right. You're not really, there's still got to be some qualitative, notions because we're human beings and I don't think yeah. you can ever get away from that right. but I'd like to see if we value things agilely mm -hmm. 
and you go back to the manifesto, the value is in working software. So I'd like to see something here in the certification that actually is working software, where people are delivering something. It's not just interviews. Uh, teacher, teacher, uh, how do you do that for a business analyst, project manager, or tester? They need to participate on, there, there needs to be something that's that's the that does. But, but that's right here. That's, that's, that's too late. You can't be that. Uh, but, but that's not the only place oh, okay. you're going to be seeing it. Hold on, right. hold on, remember, right. knowledge, to knowledge this idea. certification. We did not mention certification in the first two phases. This is a path that certification well, fits. Every, every you can't, so a certificate of attendance. You can't call something an associate and not tell me it's a certificate. No, of course right. it's not. Like no, no, no. That doesn't make sense. So, okay. You're not a certified certificate. Cert yeah, you're not a cert it's not a certified certificate. Like, come on. No, no, no. <laughs> well, it's got a big seal. You don't have to be a PTM to be an excellent We're about at the end. I just didn't understand. I just didn't understand your point. Now, you know where I live, so you can come get me. But for, <laughs> uh, for the audience and the camera, can you elaborate on what a deliverable, like don't say working software, say working product, right? Or substitute. What would a project manager or a business analyst well, you if you're a project manager and you're a business analyst and you're delivering something in an agile way, then I think the thing that comes in my mind is something like a story map or something that something that's a consumable in the process that you're actually going to participate in. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. All ideas are from all. Just, uh, that's nice. I would propose an experience report. Oh, like a portfolio, like, like a portfolio. An experience report of something you've actually done. Correct. Well, that's that's, yeah. that's really what the interview is supposed to yeah. be about. But yeah, and the we actually, you know, but that actually, we discussed the portfolio too. thing and gone back as to as to what that would look like. You know, for portfolio yeah. interview. The, the other thing that concerns me about the hands-on immersion is that it's different than a Toastmaster who's giving, who's doing what they actually do. They're giving a brief, they're giving a speech, right? In this case, you got hands-on immersion of a team that may not have ever worked together before. Right. That's got to go through forming, storming, and all that stuff. Right. It's yes. got to deal with. You know, it's a, it's his his point, which um, uh, when I raised a certain objection about that, he said he said, "Come on, Alistair, four hours. You don't think you can tell if this guy can do some agile programming?" Even if they're in a dysfunctional team, you, know, you, can, you, know, you can you can spot the idea is that that's the point of having the experts, right? It's, right. It's, but you can't you can't necessarily determine whether they can uh, produce working software, right? Whereas in the experience report, at least they have to. Be good liar. About and that's where. <laughs> 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 that's where we. Is it the opposite? <laughs> sure. Sure. There, look, the idea that he's got is get a real honest to goodness customer, a real person from a business yeah. to come and say, I need this for my business. Build it, right? And then mm -hmm. you see the code getting built. You heard any that Pat Maddox was talking about one day, how they produce it one day. No, the real software's being built. Actually, in that day, the one I've got concern about is the project manager slash scrum master that may not be enough complexity. That's, that's actually the role that I find uh, most Hard. difficult to assess. The other one is the business analyst, the programmer, tester, UI designer, those kinds of people. Mm -hmm. You can see how to do their stuff, and the real stuff. Uh, last question. Well, with more, a more comment to, to, end, to, to go towards that. If there was opportunity in the focus track, not necessarily the requirement, but opportunity to do some portion of what would end up being the hands-on immersion, of the certificate phase, have that built in as a possibility in the focus track phase. I think that would be just a thought of that. Remember, each one of these phases has assessment, so I don't right. expect that the development track will assess through an exam. I, and that's part where if you propose that kind of assessment, we'll probably say no. During mm -hmm. the development track, do something, show there's a project, there's a code, part of your assessment. All right. We're out of time. Obviously, it's the beginning of a long conversation. You guys know how to reach out. Thank you. Thank you.